So it's the Feast of Shavuot today. We're really excited. And it's a beautiful day. The water looks cold. But we are ready to rock and roll. We've been working hard for a couple weeks getting ready. So we're hauling stuff down now, little by little, to the beach to be here all day. really early in the morning on Sunday morning and we're going to claim this space this morning while the boricas are in the oven. Wish you were here to help. Next time. Watch and learn. the garden because the floor, the heat of the day is going to be a hot day. And I still have to go get the girls up because they're sleepy heads. But I need their help so they got to get up. How about those poor trees right there?
music had to scale the trees to do it. But the blankets are down, the chairs are out, the wedding feast table is ready to rock and roll. So we're gonna go back, get the food, get the girls, change into some white clothes, and come out here and enjoy Shavuot for the entire day. It's a beautiful day, beautiful, beautiful day. I'm very excited, I'm hoping lots of people come. Whoever Yeshua would like to send, we are here and ready and waiting to tell them the good news about the Melchizedek Covenant. Dessa, oh, you still not awake? The last thing is the um, cooler. Nice round river rock. Down by the river. Shavuot is all about the covenant. It's all about coming into covenant. At the base of Mount Sinai, Yehovah invited Israel into covenant with him, into a marriage type arrangement with him. Forty days later, they committed adultery and um, thus broke their covenant, thus needing a way back to that covenant. Levitical law came after that, prescriptive law, for people who were sick. So it was given as a prescription, as Dr. David Perry says, so that they could have Yahuwah's presence with them until Yeshua came and did away with the Levitical law, restoring the original Melchizedek law that was given before a Levitical law there at the foot of Mount Sinai. And you can read it for yourself in Exodus 19 through 24. And today, as a New Covenant believer, you get to enter the Melchizedek Covenant, the original idea of Yahuwah. Not the Levitical law, but the, Le but the Melchizedek law. After Yeshua left, do you remember he told his disciples to wait? Basically, he was telling them to wait in Jerusalem during the Feast of Shavuot for the promise that would come. The promise that would come was the Rak HaKodesh. The Ruach HaKodesh came and moved like a mighty wind through all the people that were gathered there and poured herself out on them. And that's what we seek today. We want to enter the covenant, the Melchizedek covenant. We want to have the Ruach HaKodesh land on us. Ayo. And just the idea of a wedding, and this is a betrothal to Yeshua. I love Shavuot because it is so beautiful. Um, I don't know how you couldn't want to do Shavuot like this. This is what we want to invite people into, is learning how to do the feasts from delight and from passion and from really looking at it and really playing in the feasts 
and discovering a new way to interpret them, to celebrate them, to rehearse them in a way that is intriguing and inviting for not only people to come and learn, but also for the Ruach HaKodesh to, uh, to enjoy being here as well. Not the chair. and preparing for Shavuot, we prepare the baskets that we give away. And one of the things in here is a Melchizedek priesthood chart. This is from Dr. David Perry's book, Back to the Melchizedek Future. It's a good thing to uh, study on this day. Uh, then I have a handout about the mikvah, what it is about, how you do it, what kind of mikvahs are available. This is, we're gonna do one of these today. Then I have in here, um, an invitation to the fall feast because I want people who come to the spring feast to be able to join us for the fall feast so I have um, invitation to the fall feast come right here so they can join us if they like. I also have a Shavuot parallel handout. You have parallels between the giving of the covenant at Mount Sinai and the outpouring of the Rock HaKodesh after Yeshua left. Great little thing to have. Uh, I also have a little invitation to our youth group called Second Wave. And I have a handbook here that is full of the story of Shavuot. And it tells all about the original Shavuot and then the Shavuot when Yeshua came and what we're invited to right now. Then I have a little poem about Shavuot. Um, it's a mixture of my words and Rabbi Israel Najjar's words. It's a beautiful poem about Yahweh's heart towards us. And I have a mezuzah document that is pretty long and it goes right inside your mezuzah on your door frame. This will, uh, this is good. This reminds us of what the promises that we made, a ton of scripture in it, and the promises that Yahweh has made to us for keeping the covenant. And I have my daughter make some zitzit keychain holders. We don't believe you have to wear these anymore, but these are fun to have as keychain holders. And last but not least, you cannot have a covenant you cannot have a wedding without a covenant confirming meal, so we have little wedding cakes right here. And then some stuff about our ministry. And of course, you have to have flowers. Uh, I want to have some. Okay.
comes. It's the Ruach. A rushing wind. your agreement to be part of the royal priesthood, accepting all assignments and rhythms associated with that position. Yeah, I will be troth. Betrothed. Betrothed. See unto me in righteousness and in justice and in living kindness and in compassion and I will be truth, see unto me in faithfulness, and you shall shout, no, Yahweh, Hosea 2, 21 through 22. I'll always be good, and I will give you the ability in lieu of your virginal faithfulness, the ability to keep the life-giving covenant by which you and your children will live in health and tranquility. All these conditions are valid and established forever and ever and are established in the Torah and revealed in the life of the groom, Yeshua. Yehovah, desiring to confer privileges upon his people Israel and to transmit these valuable assets to them, takes upon himself the responsibility of this marriage contract to be paid from the best portions of his property, the best being his own son as the kinsman redeemer, the bridegroom who has proven himself worthy to carry out the conditions of the contract in favor of his father, uh, Yehovah and to, and to enable those that love him from the lost tribes and all who are grafted in to be reconciled back to his father to the original Melchizedek priesthood and to inherit substance now and in eternity. And the bride has made this pledge before Yehovah and before these witnesses that in Yeshua's name through his work and his gift of the Ruach she betroths herself to her groom without reservation as his bride forever. She trusts that the groom will rescue her from Hasatone's grip and seat her at the great wedding feast where the culmination of this marriage will be enacted in full. She promises to delight in him and takes on the requirements of the covenant with the general and unique assignments given to her as an individual. May the bridegroom rejoice with the bride whom he has taken as his possession and may the bride rejoice with the husband of her youth while uttering words of praise.
was just wondering why we blow the shofar on Shavuot. Is it because there was a sound of shofars from the mountain at Sinai? Or is it because we're making a proclamation? And we could also be announcing a high feast day and uh, an assembly summoning Israel. on these rings because these are sign both symbols of a blood covenant which Rebecca and then this was with Yehovah and then this is the same so I keep those on but that other necklace I have been wearing it for a couple years showering with it everything and I it been fine but then I went to Mikvid I came out of the water I was drying off and I could tell right away I didn't feel it and I was like it's gone and then I look down and it's basically between my feet, laying on the on the beach. I was like, okay, that's trippy. That's never happened before. Well, put it back on, go about my business. The next time I come down to Mikva, go out in the water, Mikva, come out, I'm drying off. It's gone again, and it's on the beach. It's funny. It, I was unbelievable. Well, it's believable because it happened to me. But anyway, so then I knew that next time I Mikva that I need to take that off first because I probably wasn't going to get three strikes because <laughs> next time I came out of the water I wouldn't be getting that necklace back. <laughs> claim that Hasatan has to this planet, to the creation and the no. physical planet, he also uh, has physical 
he has claim to the inhabitants of the planet. They came with the planet, and so, you know, unless there's this provision, and we have freedom of choice, and we have to choose it, you know, God does everything he can. They pay the ultimate price, Yeshua did, but we have to make the choice on our part to accept it and join into the plan to get free. So it's a big deal with the eternal consequences to get to get free of that claim. And, it, and it's not about how much we love the king or how much we've given our heart there. That it, that's almost like a separate issue. This is just the fine print. This is just the legal, that little legal requirement, that little golden ring, that little marriage certificate, you know, that's the legal document that in the end will be absolutely necessary be better if you never entered it than to enter it you know hastily or too quickly and then turn away from it you know so we take this very seriously upon his people Israel and to transmit, transmit these valuable assets to them takes upon himself the responsibility of this marriage contract to be paid from the best portions of his property. The best being his own son as the kinsman redeemer, the bridegroom, who has proven himself worthy to carry out the conditions of the contract in favor of his father Yehovah and to enable those that love him from the lost tribes and all who are grafted in to be reconciled back to his father, to the original Melchizedek priesthood, and to inherit substance, now and in eternity. And the bride, individuals within Israel, have made this pledge before Yahuwah and before these witnesses, that in Yeshua's name, through his work and his gift of the Ruach, she betroths herself to her groom without reservation as his bride forever. She trusts that the groom will rescue her from Hasatan's grip and seat her at the great wedding feast, where the culmination
life obey the commandments. John writes, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. The angel said, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Joshua said, Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, the gods which your fathers served, which are beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, who, in whose land you are living. As for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh the Lord.